Friend, Friend of, of sinners. sinners. January 14th, 2023, Saturday of the first week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from Him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of Him to whom we must render an account. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went out along the sea. All the crowd came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the customs post. Jesus said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors and said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on today's readings by Bob The Lord Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. Our first reading reminds us that Word of God is able to cut through all the fat and other useless aspects of our life and get down to what really counts. Nothing can be hidden from God, for God knows us not only as our Creator but as one who has lived with our skin on. The responsorial psalm reminds us that only with God and God's commands can we have true life. In the Gospel, Jesus calls the tax collector Levi and reaches out a healing, forgiving, hand to Levi and to all those who are in need of the help of the Divine Physician. The letter to the Hebrews speaks of the Word of God as a sharp sword which can cut deeply, accurately, and down to the bone. 
The sword or the knife a butcher can easily cut away that which is useless and leave only the best. The Word of God, both Scripture and, more importantly Jesus, the Word of God made flesh, is able to do the same in the lives of people. God discerns and knows clearly the heart of each individual. No one can fool or deceive God, although they can deceive and fool others and even themselves. Jesus and his Abba Father knows us through and through, because not only has God created us, but God has walked among us within our human skin in the person of Jesus. Jesus is able to relate to us as a fellow human being. Jesus suffered all the pains, trials, and temptations we suffer, but never sinned. It is because we have Jesus as the one who is with us that we can never deceive God but can be cared for and loved in all our humanness, even in our sinfulness. If one wants a great relationship with God, the psalmist tells us, all we need do is keep God's commandments. Doing what God wills for us will lead to refreshment, wisdom, rejoicing, and life. What is necessary for us is to listen to God and seek to do God's will, thus being faithful to the Word of God, Scripture and Jesus. In the Gospel we are reminded that Jesus' ministry attracts a lot of attention. All sorts of people flock to hear and see Jesus. Those who seem most interested in Jesus' words are those who seek solace, healing, wholeness, salvation. Jesus reaches out to those who need him the most, sinners, the infirm, and outcasts. Levi, the tax collector, is one who hears Jesus' invitation and responds. The religious leaders are appalled at Jesus eating with tax collectors, people considered to be public sinners because they make their wealth by serving the occupying government at the expense of their own people and other known sinners. Jesus, being able to see with the sword of God's discernment, is aware of the leader's objections, even though they do not voice it loudly. Jesus reminds them that it is the sick who seek out the help of a doctor. Healthy people, at least those who think they are healthy, do not turn to the one who can heal because they don't realize how sick they are. Discernment and honesty in the presence of God are key points in the readings today. Discernment is a gift from God to be able to distinguish the good from the bad. People can deceive others. They may even deceive themselves, but they can never deceive God. It is only when we are humble and honest with ourselves that we realize how sinful we are. It is then that God can bring us solace, forgiveness, healing, wholeness, salvation. I thought about the role of insurance in the physical health of a person. Insurance is there to aid us, and sometimes insurance companies go to the position of strongly encouraging us to seek medical help by going to our physician. Although insurance companies often act out of wanting to save money by having us be treated before things get worse, they still can be useful in our getting the physical solace we need. As disciples of the Divine Physician, all of us should be concerned for the spiritual solace of others. We should encourage others to go to the Divine Physician and seek spiritual, if not also physical, healing. Our motive should not just to be rewarded for being concerned about others, but because we ourselves have experienced the healing touch of the Divine Physician and want others to experience His healing solace. God want us to have solace, but God will not force it upon us. Jesus will heal us when we admit our need to be healed. God send us people who seek our healing as well as their own healing. I draw another similarity to people seeking healing from addiction through the various 12-step programs. The first step is to admit that one is sick, 
an alcoholic, an addict, or whatever type of negatively influenced person one is, and needs help. The next steps is to admit that one needs God in order to get better. Today we are asked to reflect on our need of healing, physical, emotional, and especially spiritual, and to turn to the Divine Physician who is willing to bring us solace. The personal question or action for today, what area, areas in my life need, needs to be healed? Am I willing to do what is necessary for the Divine Physician to heal me? Am I willing to admit my illness, sin, negative proclivity to evil, and seek God's will for my life? Do I support others who are seeking to be healed by the Divine Physician? Let us pray, Blessed are you, Lord God, ever loving and desiring to heal us. Through your goodness, you promise us solace, forgiveness, wholeness, healing, salvation, if we but turn to you through Jesus, your Son, the Divine Physician. Sometimes we like staying in our ailing condition. We get attention and even pleasurable experiences and or gifts, even though they will not last. Sometimes we do not realize how really ill we are. We think that we are above getting sick. It is only when your Holy Spirit, with the gift of discernment, shines the glittering sword of your word on our lives and reveals that which is not good in our lives, that we can turn to the Divine Physician and ask Him to cut away the diseased part of our lives. Help us to humbly and honestly admit our sinfulness and seek your forgiveness and pardon. We give you all the glory and praise for your great love and willingness to heal us. Let us seek out your rule in our lives. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Brother, the Divine Healer who brings us solace and leads us on our way back to you, and who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen.